Crosscoder Academy. So in this video, we'll be discussing an important array interview question. So let's get started. So the problem is that we'll be given an array containing only zeros and ones. Find the largest subarray which contain equal number of zeros and ones. The expected time complexity should be O of n. So what the problem is that we'll be given an array and we need to find the largest subarray which contains equal number of zeros and ones. So there is an array given which has uh, zeros and ones and we need to find out the largest subarray which contain equal number of zeros and ones. So in the output, uh, we have to return the length of the largest subarray. So in this problem, if you see, this is one subarray which has equal number of zeros and ones. So this length is two. Then we have another subarray which has equal number of zeros and ones, which is this, this subarray. And this also has length two. Then we have another subarray. Which has equal number of zeros and ones. So if you see this subarray, this has three zeros and three ones. So this has length six. So the largest subarray, largest subarray, which contain equal number of zeros and ones is of length six. So output will come out to be six. We need to return the maximum length. So I hope you understood what the problem is. Now let's see how we'll approach the problem. First of all, we'll discuss the brute force approach. So what is the first thing which comes into your mind? Just pause the video and think what's the like brute force approach which is coming into your mind. So see, this is in this we have to find subarray. So whenever we have to find subarray, we can have um, we have we can have a nested loop and we need we can find all the subarrays. So what we will do is we will find all subarrays, and for each subarray we will check if that subarray has equal number of equal number of zeros and ones, zeros and ones. So if that subarray has equal number of zeros and ones, we will find the length of that subarray. And that we will store in a variable length of that subarray. And we will store this in let's say max length will be a variable. We will be storing the maximum length which comes in this variable. So this is the brute force approach which we can use for this problem. Um, but obviously this is not efficient approach. So we have to do this in expected time complexity which is O of n. But this will take more than that. Right. So we need to think of an optimized approach. So let's see what we can do. Let me write again test case. The test case given to us is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. So see, whenever we are given to find subarray, na, so if you see in the problem, we are have to find subarray and it should have equal number of zeros and ones, right? Equal number of zeros and ones. So whenever subarray word comes now, so two things you can do. Either you can use sliding window approach or you can use hash map approach. So see in this question, we'll be using hash map approach. So we will be using hash map. Let's see how. <coughs> so see, let me do indexing first. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right. So see, let's uh, let's say I am changing all the zeros, all the zeros I am changing to minus one. For now, wherever zero is there in this array, I am changing it to minus one. So the array will become one minus one in place of zero. I am writing minus one. One, 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 minus one, minus one. So see why I'm replacing, why I am replacing zero with minus one. So if you see, let's say we have a subarray which has equal number of zeros and ones. So let's say we have one, zero, zero, one, zero, and one. This is a subarray. And let's say this is, uh, there are some values here and some values here. So this is a subarray which has three ones and three zeros, three ones uh, and three zeros. Right. So it has equal number of zeros and ones. So See, if the array has equal number of zeros and ones, if we replace zeros with minus ones, 
then the sum then the sum of the entire array will come out to be zero sum if we do the sum because see then how like the count of ones will be equal to count of zeros so if we replace zeros with minus ones so that will nullify each other one plus one plus three uh, one will be three and minus one minus one minus one will be minus three so they will nullify and the sum will come out to be zero so this is an indication that whenever our sum comes out to be zero it means that it means see like it means that the the, the array sub array has equal number of zeros and ones so this is the this is the approach we will be using in this question so what we have done till now is we have replaced all the zeros with minus one right now if you see if you traverse this array let's take a sum variable let's take a sum variable initialize it with zero and let's take a max length variable also initialize this with zero and let's take another variable um, end index let's take a variable end index so initially let's take end index so the end index of the sub array let's take it initially minus one so if you will see if we traverse this we will uh, we are over here so we will add this in sum so sum will become one then we go here then sum will become minus uh, it will be one minus one it will become zero so sum becomes zero means means that this is a sub array which has equal number of zeros and ones right see zero will be here so it has one one zero and one so right now but what happens if we have to have this case if we have to have this case so what will happen in that case we'll be requiring to use hash map we will have to use hash map right see let's see how we can use hash map so let's say over here your sum is x right and for let's say for uh, this sub array this uh, from this uh, for this sub array uh, your sum out comes out to be x again for this sub array like from here to here your sum was x and from here to here the sum is also x so it means that whatever between this is whatever this is in between this point and this point this is zero sum this has zero sum just like i'm just taking an example to make you understand so if this sum is x and if this entire sum till this index is also x then means this middle this middle part whatever that was has some zero and we know when the sum is zero means we have equal number of zeros and ones so what we will be doing is we will be storing every sum like this is x sum we will be storing this x sum in the hash map and correspondingly we will store its index so that index the last index where we saw that so this is one index so we will be storing one index now again when we will encounter x sum we will check whether it was in hash map yes means we have encountered that x sum before means if we have encountered it before then the with the sum which is here has is zero sum so that means this from this index to this index this is our sub array which has equal number of zeros and ones so i hope you understood how we are using this approach if you didn't understood just like uh, go previously few minutes and again uh, rewatch the video you will understand what we are trying to do so let's start the iteration i'll write the test case again <coughs> so uh, we have one one we are replacing zero with minus one one minus one over here there are three ones and then we have two zeros so minus one minus one right now let's do the indexing zero one two three four five and six and we will take a hash map also hash map and we'll take three variables initially we'll have sum which will be zero max length is the variable which we need to return and we'll initialize it with zero also 
and we will take a end index variable and initialize it to minus 1 right so now let's get started over here sum is uh, we will traverse this array so element is 1 we will add sum we will update sum then this sum is 1 so the sum in the hash map sum will be added and the corresponding index will be added so sum is 1 and at what index it was at 0 index then we'll move forward now minus 1 will be added so this sum will become 0 1 minus 1 0 now sum becomes 0 means we got a sub array which has equal number of zeros and 1 so we will calculate the max length max length will be 2 max length will be 2 right and end index will also update so end index will is 1 and again this zero sum we will update that zero sum being counted at index 1 right now let's again move forward over here now sum is uh, values 1 so sum will become 1 now see earlier earlier we got we got sum 1 we got sum 1 and we got sum 1 at 0 index means till here it was sum 1 till here and from this point from the starting till here again we got sum 1 means whatever was this this thing these two values this was 0 sum of these two was 0 hence this has equal number of zeros and 1 right so what we will do is we will update uh, our max length max length since these are also of two length max length will not get updated and end index you can update or since max length is not updated end index will also be same right and uh, right so now what we'll do is we'll move forward just let me erase this right now we'll go over here so uh, sum will become 2 then again we go here now before going forward sum we are getting sum 2 at which index we are getting at uh, 3 index right now we'll go again forward so sum will become 3 we get 3 sum at index 4 now again we go forward we get minus 1 sum will become 2 now see we get sum 2 sum 2 and the same sum we have already got we already got sum 2 at th 3 index so see these is your again sub array of length 2 which you are getting right so we will not update because maximum length is already 2 now see uh, we will go again we will go again forward we will get minus 1 so sum will become 1 now see this is important now sum becomes my, uh, 1 and we have already encountered sum 1 at 0 index means this this was sum 1 and from this till here again we are getting sum 1 means if here is sum 1 and again till here we are getting sum 1 means this thing this thing which was inside is 0 is contributing 0 so that's why 1 plus 0 is becoming the entire sum 1 so this is a sub array with equal number of equal number of zeros and ones hence its length is 6 will update 6 end index also update make it 6 right so i hope you understood how this is working at last you can return max length right so now uh, let's see the code once for this if you understood the approach code is really simple so in the code what we are doing is this is the main function we have taken the array size of the array and we are calling this max length function max length function what we are doing we are taken a map we have taken three variables as discussed what we are doing here in this for loop is we are changing the zero to minus one right then after that we are iterating through the array and we are find, uh, calculating the sum if sum becomes zero means we got a sub array update max length and end index otherwise we will also check if sum is already present in the hash map so we were doing that now that if sum is already pre present then if max length is less than the desired that length 
update the max length and in the ending length. Right. Otherwise, if it's not present, if the sum is not present, update it the sum in the hash map. So sum, uh, we'll add the corresponding index as value to that sum key. And after this, just return the max length. So the time complexity for this is O of n as we are doing single traversal and the space complexity will be also O of n because we are using a hash map. So this is the time complexity and this is the space complexity. I hope you understood the problem and the approach. So if you like the video, please like it. Let me know in the comments if you have any doubt and thanks for watching.